Yeah, for those of you who I haven't met, my name's Mike. Um, I'm just one of you, so don't uh, <laughs> don't view me any different. I'm just a, a very happy family member of, of our Destiny Church um, for the last six years. Uh, we, I think this is location four since I've joined the church as we've grown, and it's been amazing. And um, yeah, just really felt, um, well, there was a need, because Daniel's in Italy, and just felt that I had a message um, for you today. So maybe just to start, let's bow our heads in, in prayer. Father God, we just thank you for every single person with us in the room today. We thank you for every person who's joined us online. We thank you for this church, Lord. We thank you for this community and this family that you've created here in the Nuremberg region just to connect, for us to plug into, for us to spend time getting to know you and worshiping you. And we just ask that you would just open up hearts this morning that they would be receptive to the word that you have. Pray this in your name. Amen. So, um, I thought I should start today by just letting you know like a little bit of insight into to my daily routine. Um, because every day, my alarm is set for 6 a.m. so I can faithfully get up, spend time with God, read my Bible. And every Monday, I'm pretty good. And then Tuesdays and Wednesdays, I'd say I'm okay-ish. You know, if we're giving it a grade, uh, unfortunately, we're closer to a C than a B. Um, and then the week gets on top of me. It's work, it's kids, and 6 a.m. is very early, especially if you're me, um, because I'm not a morning person, and you can ask my wife, Katie, about that um, at all. I'm not a morning person. So that's also like one of the things I want to crack. Um, but thanks to God, he's gracious, uh, and hopefully I'm not the only one who has this, this struggle, but he, he speaks to me in different ways, and one of them is worship music. Um, and today's message is completely inspired um, by the last song we sang, Champion, um, by Bethel Music. And we sang it, I think, two weeks ago, maybe three. Um, and, I mean, we've sung it a lot in church. And suddenly I sang this song and I was just like, wow, there's, there's a lot going on inside me as I sing this. And I went home and I listened to it and, and then I just heard the words completely differently. And I just feel there's, um, yeah, there's a lot to unpack in that. But before we dive into it, into the song itself, because we'll, we'll be going back to that, um, I wanted to just start uh, by rooting us in the Word of God and starting with one of the passages um, that is fundamental to the song. So it's from Ephesians 2, if you have Bibles, Ephesians 2, 1 to 10. It's on the screen as well. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live, when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in our transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ, seated us with him in the heavenly realms, in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Jesus Christ. For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one may boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God has prepared in advance for us to do. So, the first part of today is going to be a question around, how do you see yourself? Now, this is something that from my personal experience, I've, I've struggled with at different times in life and in different parts of life um, around a thing that, that's called, particularly for me, imposter syndrome, where it's like, you know, I'm not really good enough for this situation I found myself in. I mean, it's defined um, for those who aren't familiar. Imposter syndrome is the condition of feeling anxious and not experiencing success internally despite being high-performing in external objective ways. 
It's a condition that results in people feeling like a fraud and doubting their abilities. So everyone else is looking at you and saying, yeah, that makes sense. That's cool. And inside you're like, there's no ways that can be me. There's no ways that can be for me. And it's, it's something that has been a struggle I- in life in general for me, but in also in particular in my walk with God. Because I've had these moments throughout life where God speaks a word. And I'm like, yes, that's, that's a word from God. And then it gets validated by someone or something externally that couldn't have known the word that's in my heart. And I'm like, cool, so I heard the word, it's been validated, maybe I'll hear another word that further validates it. And then I have this amazing response that goes something along the lines of, but surely it's not really for me. You know, (laughs) maybe it's a word for someone else in my life. You know, I'll I'll keep looking out for the person it might actually be for, because it's not for Mike. Or it could just be for this little small part of my life. You know, I think it fits there, so we'll just leave it in that box because that's a comfortable box for us. Or the other, w- one of my favorites is, you know, that was a word for that season, and, you know, circumstances are different now. You know, we were in South Africa, now we're in Germany. It, it's, it doesn't really work like that. They don't, it's not uh, international. <laughs> and, and I suppose the one that gets me the most is, uh, what will people think if I actually did that? Or if I said that out loud? Maybe I can just stay here. You know, this place is comfortable. Those cinema seats are comfortable. Trust me, I've sat in them. <laughs> it's less comfortable here. <laughs> and it's easy. Uh, and I hope I'm not the only one that has this journey. Uh, I was saying to Katie, uh, it could be quite awkward if this is just me pouring out my heart. <laughs> and everyone's like, man, he's got some things to sort out. <laughs> so I hope there's some of you that can relate. Um, and it's, it's easy to do that because there are powerful forces that are, we're up against. Let's not be naive to that, you know. Um, one is time. You know, the longer you, you let something sit, the less relevant it seems. The other is inertia. And I'm quite a big guy. It takes a, a lot for me to get going. But you need to get going because if you don't, um, if you don't take that action, it's, it's going to disappear. And it's just going to be, oh, yeah, I could have had that really cool impact but I I didn't move. And the last one is, of course, um, Satan. He's acting against us, and he's acting especially when we have a word from God. And these factors, they can smother a message um, quicker than most things. And the other thing that I feel is like suddenly, like the, what is it, like a dredger. Do you know a dredger that cleans out rivers? The dredger just starts like churning stuff up, and you like go back to, you're just filled with everything you did wrong every past sin, every mistake you've made, they're just, they're just back in your mind. And you're like, whoa, I thought I dealt with that a long time ago. And now it's back. And you start to forget about the victories. You start to forget, to forget about the times that God has come through for you. And you're just like, just getting filled with these, like, am I, am I good enough through God? Um, and you fall back into that mindset of, of being inadequate. And the good news is, you can change this, <laughs> and you can change it, as it said in the passage today, and we'll come back to it just now, our faith in the Lord is how we change this. It takes faith to believe the Word of God. It takes faith to believe this book. Yes, there are a lot of people that have spent their lives validating it, but it still takes faith. There's still that, that little part where you've got to jump. It takes faith to have a relationship with our Lord. And it's this faith which needs to be at the heart of hearing from God. If you want to hear from God, you've got to be willing to jump. And it's this faith which needs to be at the center of how we see ourselves. Coming back to that first question. So to help you answer the question, the next one is, well, how does God see you? And we're going to bring up the lyrics now of, the first verse of Champion. And don't worry, I won't be singing uh, (laughs) because that would not be a good experience. (laughs) Um, So I'm just going to read them through to you. But also in a a way that the first time I read them, I was like, wow, this is completely different to what I sang. I've tried so hard to see it. It took me so long to believe it that you choose someone like me to carry your victory. Perfection could never earn it. 
with all the perfectionists out there, it could never earn it. You give what we don't deserve, and you take the broken things and raise them up to glory. I mean, these are, like, there's poetry, and then there's, like, God-infused poetry. But also, to make sure that we stay rooted in, in, in God, there's, a, there's another verse from John's gospel that I want to share, which, which touches on the same elements. John 15, 14 to 16. You are my friends if you do what I command. This is Jesus speaking to his disciples. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called, called you friends. For everything that I have learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might, make, might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. We are chosen. We, that's you and I, everyone in this room, everyone online, are chosen. We are, you know, we're broken. We're imperfect. We're just trying to get it right. We're sometimes we're just trying to get by. You know, I've had plenty of days where the goal is to get to five, maybe eight. You know, <laughs> sometimes the goal is not to lose my job. That's also a good goal, I'll tell you. But <laughs> that shouldn't be the goal every day. Um, you know, that's who he's chosen. He's chosen these people that sometime you can wake up and just want to get to bed the that day, and he's gone. That's enough for me. That's, I mean, he also knows what he's going to do with us, but he meets us where we are. And if there's one thing you want to, I want you to take away, if there's one thing, just zone in for this one minute. You need to hear that today. You need to accept that you are chosen. You need to believe today that you are chosen because it is who you are. And the best news is it's not our choice. You know, it's, it's like throw yourself back to high school, or for those of you in the room that are in high school, you know, the panic that can set in when teams are being chosen for football or handball or volleyball or whatever your sport is. You know, the, the sheer panic that you're going to be the one who's chosen last. And yet every time God, Jesus, is choosing you first. It doesn't matter what you would want to do. He's going to choose you. He's already chosen you. You just need to respond. And, you know, the, one of the things that kind of broke me about this song and what we had hit home so much is that that truth is hard to accept. You know, I'm not standing here today to say, hey, just accept it. You're chosen by God. It's, quite, it's, a, it's, a, big, it's a big deal. It's a big thing to think through and to process. Um, it's, and, and if you look further on in the song, um, the next, I think it's actually one of the choruses, it says, I am who you say I am. You crown me with confidence. That confidence in, in who I am. I am seated in the heavenly place, undefeated, with the one who has conquered it all. And there's a little line when you listen to the song, because you're all going to go home and listen to it, where um, the singer throws in, in the middle of everywhere, I know who I am because I know whose I am. Imagine if we could see ourselves the way God sees us. Imagine, like, with the love that he has for us. That is a superpower. That will give you freedom. Whatever's holding you back, if you can see yourself the way that Christ sees you, you are free. Because then the rest doesn't matter. What your family thinks of you doesn't matter. What your friends think of you doesn't matter. What your colleagues think of you doesn't matter. And what strangers, and trust me, I've worried a lot about what strangers think of me, it doesn't matter. It's all irrelevant when we know and we accept that we belong to Jesus. When we see ourselves the way Jesus sees us. And to jump back into the Ephesians um, chapter that we looked at. Verses 4 to 6 read. 
But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in our transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Jesus Christ. The power of Jesus raised us to life. The power of Jesus lifts us to be seated with God. I mean, there's being chosen and then there's being chosen. To be put on that level, to be seated next to God. So, the final question with all of this, a lot of questions today, is, so how do we respond? How should we respond? And this is my take after thinking this through and, and praying into it. And this is how I believe we should respond. Firstly, accept and be free. We need to believe the words. If we don't believe them, they're just words. Truly believe them and change our perspective of ourselves. Importantly here, this is all about how you see yourself. Change your perspective on yourself. Change the narrative on your life. Every time you think that thought that is putting you down, even if you don't verbalize it, you are, you are just putting that negativity, that narrative back onto your life. And you're saying to God, thanks for choosing me, but I'm okay. I actually don't quite think I can do that. I don't quite think that word's for me. Change that narrative. You're the only one that can. With Christ's love and with his faith, you can change that narrative. That little voice in your head, sorry to say, you own it. You're the one who has to change that narrative. And then be free from the weight of pressure and expectation. Really, true freedom lies in accepting this. Remember, it's by God's grace that you were chosen and saved. We didn't deserve it. We didn't um, <laughs> need to do anything to earn it. That's, that's why Christ set us free, because there's nothing for us to prove. And other than accepting Christ as our Lord and Savior, that's the one condition. We need to accept him. We need to go back to the beginning. You need to accept, and then you're free. And you don't need to do anything. There's nothing else. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. Remember, it's always through faith. But that is not from yourselves. That is a gift of God. So it's like, it's too awesome. Honestly, like this is when I read this, I was just like, this is so cool. You get given the answer and then you get told you, when you immediately think this is going to be really hard to do. Then God says, don't worry, I've, I've, I'll do it for you. I'll give you the strength you need to do that. Not by works so that no one can boast. And it's also by design. You know, accepting that you are chosen by Christ also means not boasting that you've done anything. It's not walking out here and saying, wow, Mike smashed that today. That's, I mean, th that's not what it's about. It's not about what you think, what is happening at work or with your family or how amazing you are. It's there because you've put God first and you've said, yes, I accept that you choose me and that you've died for me and that you've saved me. And then, yes, he will use you to do incredible things. But let's not forget where that power comes from. Because our identity is him, in him, sorry. It's not about us as individuals anymore. And stepping into God's calling for your life means you get to glorify his name. The second response is take off the cape. Because <laughs> when you accept um, your identity in Christ, you get rid of that, that feeling like an imposter. You get rid of that, 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 that not good enough. Um, and, but you need to do this every day. Like this is, a, this is an everyday state of mind you need to be in. And you're not a superhero, unfortunately. You've managed to untap the superpower, but you're not a superhero. And what I mean by that is you don't get to wear the cape. When a superhero wants to use their powers, they put on a cape and they, a mask, and they go out there. Unfortunately, God has told us that that's not an option. We can't stay incognito and just, you know, cruise through life as Christians with this amazing superpower of the way we see ourselves and that we're chosen by God, but we just simply don't, we don't live that outside this room. We don't live that past Sunday. Um, you know, we need to walk with God that has chosen us every single day 
And the, in the final verse of, of the passage today says, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God has prepared in advance for us to do. I mean, how incredible to leave here today knowing that God has already prepared what's waiting outside that door for you. He's gone, already gone before you. You know, it's like the cards are stacked in your, in your favor. That we are his handiwork. And it's, I had this uh, kind of analogy um, that I'm not sure is very good anymore, but I'll tell you anyway. Um, it's like being asked to cook a meal, like a really difficult, like a Michelin star meal, right? Just you and I. I'm not sure how good you are at cooking. I would say I'm average, maybe a bit better than average. Um, but when you arrive in the kitchen for this big meal you've got to cook, all the prep work's done. Everything's chopped. Everything's in bowls. You know, like one of those perfect cooking show meals. You know, everything's in the bowls. The recipe's laid out, and you're like, "Oh, this is this is cool. I, th I thought I was going to be peeling onions. This is amazing." And then, like a Michelin star chef, just walks to the door and he says, "Hey, I'm going to show you how to do that today." And that that's that's what you're doing. The the amount of chance that you fail, knowing that God has prepared the way, and He's with you, is just like. You need, to, you need to hear me today. It's like really small. Um, I would say zero because he's undefeated. <laughs> and, but it, it still might sound daunting. And I'm, I'm not really, please hear me. I'm not saying that this is like easy. It's, it's not supposed to be. Um, and straight away, some of you might be thinking, because I thought this straight away, but what will people think? What will people think if I respond like that? Don't forget. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what they think because you know who you are. Focus on you and what God thinks about your choice, about your new way of life. For he gives you the strength to walk with him. And finally, the final response is to lift up our voice and shout. And you can do that right now um, or you can do that in any shape or form. But do not let the words of God get cold and stale in your mind and your heart. Really, our minds are so positive, so powerful, both positively and negatively. You know, th your mind is, is a superpower, but it can also be your worst enemy. And the way that the devil can twist things inside your mind, if you leave it there for too long, is unreal. I mean, the amount of prompts and messages from God that I have not acted on is yeah, it's scary. And just because that little seed of doubt comes and you're like, ooh, but, but what will so-and-so think? Or what will they say? Or, you know, it's, it's why it's so powerful to say it out loud. And out loud, I would say, like, not everyone here is going to just scream it from the rooftops. Some of you will, and I love you for that. But I'm also not going to shout it from the rooftops. But what is saying it out loud? Maybe it's writing it down taking it out of your mind, writing it down. It can be in your notebook. It can be on your fridge. It can be anywhere. Maybe it's telling someone you trust. Maybe someone you've walked your walk with God for a while. And you can really go deep with them and say, hey, because let's be honest, if I <laughs> told you after church, hey, I, I really feel God is, is calling me to do this. I mean, there's a pretty good chance you might look at me and say, cool. Is he crazy? Um, so I'm not saying you should run out of here and just tell everyone on day one, but there's people in your life, people who know you, people who have walked with you that you can, that will treasure the message the way that you want to treasure it. But get it out there. Don't, don't let it sit in your mind. Don't let it sit in your heart because it will be tampered with. Get it out there before the seeds of doubt are sown, before you convince yourself that it wasn't really Jesus, that it wasn't really for you. And if we look at the, the final lyrics from Champion, it says, when I lift my voice and shout. So if I didn't uh, make up the heading of the section by myself. When I lift up my voice and shout, every wall comes crashing down. I have the authority. Jesus has given me. When I open up my mouth, miracles start breaking out. I have the authority Jesus has given me. My final thoughts.
case you didn't get it yet, you have the authority. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you have the authority to do what God is telling you to do. To act on that little nudge inside your heart. Start speaking these words of the Lord over your life today. Don't wait any longer. Start speaking. And then, and this is the best part, strap yourself in. Because it is a wild ride. But it's the best ride that you're going to ever go on. And whether it's about starting that ride today, or whether it's about accelerating that ride today as you take it to another level, start speaking these words over your life and strap yourself in and choose God. Please stand as we sing the song one more time.